No Australian tour would be complete without a visit to the Outback, but you don't quite realize just how big the Outback is until you're in it. Rather than spend seemingly forever driving, we hopped on a flight to Uluru, a UNESCO World Heritage Site located in the Northern Territory. Sighting Uluru from the plane was a pretty neat moment and helped us realize just how out in the middle of nowhere it truly is. The airport was on the small side, but once we'd grabbed our bags, we hopped on a bus to our hotel, ready for an early morning the next day. It is very dark behind you. Zero dark 30. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Where are we? What are we doing? It is five o'clock in the morning. We are at the Ayers Rock Resort, and today we are going to take the first bus to Uluru. Yeah, gonna get, catch that sunrise. Yeah, so watch the sunrise and then do the base walk, which is about a three and a half hour hike. So it's good to get it in early before it gets crazy hot. Yeah, because we are legit middle of the desert. Yeah, it was very hot yesterday. Cool, well, this is gonna be a freaking awesome morning. Yay! The early morning was worth it, as we had a prime spot to view the sunrise. Hey you. That's a very big rock behind you. It's not quite sunrise yet though, is it? No, I think we have like 12 minutes. Okay, we're trying to get a time lapse. I'm so hoping this is gonna work out. I'd say I still have a lot to learn about taking sunrise time lapses, but it was absolutely magical to see the rock turn a vivid red once the sun came up. Oh, it's just an absolutely gorgeous morning. It's a little bit of a chill in the air. Yeah, it's a little, it's actually very windy. Yeah, um, and we got a chance to watch the sunrise, which was absolutely gorgeous. And uh, now we're gonna go do the base walk. Yeah. How long is that supposed to take us? Mm, three hours or so. Yes, and even though while it is relatively cool right now, it's gonna get up to like 34 something degrees today, which is uh, hot. It's tough to get perspective while standing right next to it, but Uluru is massive. It rises 348 meters, or over 1,100 feet above the ground, and has a circumference of 9.4 kilometers. That's about 5.8 miles. With a rock that big, there were lots of cool places to explore. Really? Yeah. Looks like emu tracks, maybe. <laughs> this is another pretty cool cave. Yeah, I mean, I just don't understand how these things are created. There's such like a, it's almost like a, like a tube, a surfing wave kind of thing. You know, <laughs> well, this is Australia. I mean, that's an appropriate shape. Yeah. It looks like water behind you. It is a little pond. Yeah, it's a Kaju Gorge, I think, so they call this place. Yeah, it's got a watering hole, but the walls are really steep, very tall, and apparently they used to hunt emus here. Yeah, I mean, you can just imagine, I mean, we're in the middle of the Australian bush, like, water is going to be a critical resource out here. Yeah. We chose to hike clockwise around Uluru, so at least we'd have some shade in the morning. Let's just say it was really nice while it lasted.
We have officially found the sun. Hmm. Whoa, is that bright. Uh, this is gonna be a bit of a tricky walk because there's no real way to hide in the shade. But we brought like four and a half liters, liters of water or something like that. Yeah, so we should hopefully have enough to get us through. Spoiler alert, we survive. Well, we can't say that now. We've barely even started. <laughs> Put it in at the end or something. <laughs> Even though we'd hiked in the morning, by the end, it sure felt hotter than 34 degrees, and we'd gone through a lot of our water. But Amy was a good prophet. We did indeed survive. So if you can see kind of those black lines that are running down the rock, that's uh, algae actually from where the rains like run down the side of the rock. And I guess that's actually what formed the water hole we were at earlier. But that is just so cool to see. Babe, what on earth did we just find? It's like the conga line of fuzzy caterpillars or something. Oh my goodness, that is weird looking. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, fifty-nine. Fifty-nine. They can't just make it at even sixty. Wow. Jesus. This hike was my first real adventure in the Australian bush, and I was struck by just how much life was out here, even if some of it was incredibly annoying. The sun is definitely coming out, but holy crap, with the sun, these flies are horrendous. Like, ah! They get, they're they, on your hat. <laughs> they're on my hat, they're on my sunglasses, they're like buzzing in my ears. Mm -hmm. Wow! Thankfully the wind, I think, helps, because if it was still, I feel like it would be unbearable. Be worse. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's definitely better if we keep walking, so we're just gonna be uh, moving and powering through. Wow. We are very much enjoying the rock. And one of the things that I had forgotten from my trip 10 years ago, but it is so vivid, the red and the blue. And where the rock meets the sky, it's almost like you, your eyes can't focus on it or something, or you have double vision, it's very weird. But it's just so bright. Such a cool experience. It's such a contrast. Yeah. One of the things I really enjoyed was learning a bit more about Aboriginal culture. The traditional owners of the land are the Arunanagu, which is actually a collection of several Central Australian Aboriginal groups. Archaeological evidence shows Aboriginal people have lived in Central Australia for at least 30,000 years, and some of the symbolism used in the artwork found at the rock is thought to date back at least 5,000 years. There was a fair amount of information shared at various points along the walk, and we even got to learn a few local legends. So did we just learn a little Aboriginal legend? We did. So the story is that this woman, um, the Woma Python woman came from the east, and apparently her nephew was on the other side of Uluru, Uluru and fighting with some of the local men. And they injured him, but the men didn't, they were supposed to like take care of her nephew and they didn't. So she came back and killed the man who was supposed to take care of her nephew. So it's like a thing of honor was, yeah, he, he, you may be fighting with him and stabbed him in the thigh, but you're supposed to take care of him now that it's over. Yeah. Huh. So I remember when I was much younger, my dad and I went out on a hiking and camping trip that, oh, the bugs were just absolutely horrendous, like flies everywhere, mosquitoes, and all kinds of nastiness. So the flies may be bad here, but dad, don't worry. Our record is still safe. Nothing will ever compare to that one. All these rock formations are amazing, but this one, you can see where like, part of the ro rock broke off and like hit the ground. And it's just this gap that's now been worn a little bit. And it's 
pretty cool. The hike is officially over. What we did think? it. That's good. Yeah, that was, uh, it's just a, it's, it's hard to describe just kind of walking. I mean, it's out in the middle of nowhere, but it is, it's a really cool experience. I mean, we say that all the time, but it is. So yeah. where would this rank on our uh, toughest hikes? <laughs> it's a really easy hike. Like, yeah. It's very It's more flat. of a walk, more of a yeah, walk than a anything. Walk. I mean, like Tongariro that we did last year was a crazy hard hike. Yeah, this one's Tom and Ivy in Fiji, that was tough. But yeah, this was very flat, easy path, but yeah. And then, uh, so I guess that wraps about up to this morning. It's yes. about 10.50, it's getting warm. But then what do we have planned for tonight? Yay, we're doing the Sounds of Silence dinner tonight. Should be really, really freaking cool. The Sounds of Silence dinner was something that Amy had done on her previous trip to Australia, 10 years earlier with her dad. She enjoyed it so much that it was something she wanted to share with me as well. Well, you kind of clean up a little nice, don't you? Yeah, we do. Yeah. You're cleaned up too. Mm -hmm. Gotta try to keep up with current company after all. <laughs> so where are we at, babe? We are at the Sounds of Silence dinner. Oh yeah. Yeah. And oh, you can kind of see way back off there in the distance. Right hidden behind a tree. That's Uluru again. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So tell me about what the dinner is. So we've got drinks and nibbles, and we're watching the sunset. And Uluru's over there, and um, I forget what the Olga's name is, but they're over there. And um, yeah, we're gonna watch the sunset and then we go down and they've got a banquet room set up and we get to have a buffet dinner and then all the lights go out and we get an astronomer to tell us about the sky. That part I'm really looking forward to. That's gonna be super awesome. The flies are back. Yeah, the flies are back apparently. <laughs> it was an absolutely gorgeous night in an amazing setting. We're fortunate to see lots of stars from the boat but there have only been a few times in my life I've seen this many from land. Of course, stars are notoriously difficult to capture on video, but Amy got a pretty awesome photo. We are back from the Sounds of Silence dinner. It is now about 10.40 at night. Really? Wow. Okay. What'd you think? It was great. Oh, it was so cool. We learned how to like find south using the <laughs> Southern Cross, which is much harder than using the North Star in the Northern Hemisphere. But uh, yeah, it was really cool. Yeah, it was great. Of course, it, it was so dark. Like anytime I tried to film, just nothing came out. So um, yeah, but still, it was such a really cool experience here in the Outback. Yeah, it was great. Well, we had a great time last night at our Sounds of Silence dinner. Yeah. And now we are off on our third and final road trip in Australia. This one's in the bush. We yeah. are in the middle of nowhere. It is uh, very arid and dry and red. So we are driving from, we have a rental car, we're driving from Uluru, Uluru to Alice Springs, but we are gonna stop in Kings Canyon tonight and, uh, you know, see what tickles our fancy along the way. The drive was quite flat, with not a lot of other cars around. Perfect for playing with my new toy. Hey. What's up? It's zero dark 30 again. Again? Why does this keep happening I to me? know. Where are we? What's going on? What's happening? Uh, Kings Canyon Resort, I believe. Um, and out again in the middle of nowhere. But there's a hike off of, uh, it's kind of like a canyon rim, which looks really freaking cool. 
So it is just about six o'clock. We're gonna leave in about 15, 20 minutes once the sky starts lighting up just a little bit and go to the hike pretty early in the morning. Yeah. Let's go see how dark it is outside. Yeah, pretty dark out there. Just like our walk around Uluru, we figured it'd be best to do this first thing in the morning to avoid the heat. We'd also learned from that walk and had accessorized ourselves with some cool new headgear. We are starting our hike and we're wearing the most awesome fashion accessory ever. Totally. But oh, after our experience with the flies at Uluru and they're already buzzing around this morning. Yeah. Well, I think this is going to make life a lot better. So you guys are just going to have to deal with the fact we look like idiots. Hey, we look like we belong in the Amazon. Yeah. We're, we're, we're wilderness explorers out here. Yeah. yeah. So uh, we've got, what is it, a couple hour hike today? Yeah, uh, it's a six kilometer hike and it says about three or four hours, which is kind of long for a six kilometer hike, but I know we are also not expecting the easy slope that we had at Uluru. As in flat. <laughs> this is going to be quite a bit tougher. Yeah. I don't know if you guys can see, but there are flies crawling all over my face right now. <laughs> right off the bat, things started out just a bit steeper with a climb up Heart Attack Hill. Well, that was a steep climb. Yeah, it was. Holy cow. Oh. The steps are man-made, but they're like, they look like they belong. It's pretty amazing. You start to see the sun rising on the rocks behind you. That's really cool. Yeah. It's so red. It is. And we can see like the whole loop of the canyon here that we're about to go walk along. And the view out into the totally flat outback. Babe, that is just incredible behind you. It is. Wow. It feels really great. Hey. It feels like we're walking through the Grand Canyon or something. Yeah. The red rocks around you. Oh. And the way the lighting is like coming through, it's really amazing. This is a little bit more of our style hike, isn't it? It is, yeah. You like queen of the world up there? Yes. Wow. That is pretty stunning. find another absolutely gorgeous lookout. Yeah, so we are at the north side of Kings Canyon right now on, is it called Cotter's Lookout, I think? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, and it's super straight windy. Straight down. Yeah. The cliffs at King Canyon are up to 100 meters high, so it was slightly nauseating to look straight over the edge. The first part of the hike was very much what I pictured when I think of the Australian Outback. So I was absolutely stunned to find a literal Garden of Eden. So where do we make it down to? We're in the Garden of Eden. This is the water hole we were looking at from above, but 
wow it is so lush here it is just it's really kind of amazing yeah <laughs> well it is relative I suppose but there's a lot of water here yeah but you're just surrounded by these, like these red cliffs and then boom there's just this kind of lush water with plants all the way around and this you can is... see why they call it the Garden of Eden yeah uh, fortunately no apples around here so <laughs> serpents and apples yeah. Goodness, I see the cars behind you. Right there, somewhere? Is our car? Yes. Yes. <laughs> we're not gonna die in the desert? We made it. Almost. We were almost there. It was awesome. Oh yeah, this is amazing. Yeah. Oh no! I know, there's a few in here. Everybody out! Everybody out! O U T out! Oh my goodness! Wow! Crazy hair time! Oh my gosh, that was. I think that was one of my top three hikes. Like. Oh yeah. Tom and Evie in Fiji, Tongariro, New Zealand. And this was just so freaking cool. Like the geology, you know, we could see like the domes where like, you know, there were cracks that had become canyons and then the wind and the rain had kind of like eroded them. So they formed these domes. Yeah, it was just, it was really special. It was good. So then uh, I guess that's it for today, relatively. We have like a five hour drive over to Alice Springs. We're gonna go back to the resort we stayed at last night and they were nice enough to let us come back and take a shower, even though we've already checked out. And then we'll hit the road. Alrighty. After the hike, we continued on to Alice Springs and the end of our adventure in the Australian Outback. Hey everyone, hope you guys enjoyed seeing the video from the Red Center. We had an absolute blast there, even if it was really hot. The scenery was just absolutely gorgeous. Um, I am being a little sneaky right now because it is actually October 7th as I'm recording this. Today is Amy's birthday. We're here in Bali and she is on shore getting a massage right now. So I want everyone who is watching this, leave a comment down below. Make sure you wish the Admiral a happy birthday and let's, uh, let's make this a little bit of a special one for her. So thank you all for watching. I've got uh, maybe one or two more videos from our Australian tour coming up. Then we'll get back to the boat. See y'all next time.